Hey guys, welcome to Meconomist. So today I got to try the new 2017 Ford Super Duty. So what is the Super Duty? Is it a different vehicle from the other F-Series, from the F-150? Well, kind of. The Super Duty is different from the F-150, but it's still in the F-Series. So you got the F-150 and then the 250, 350, 450 and up count as Super Duties. Technically, this is only the second generation of Super Duties. There have been a lot of updates since the original Super Duty, but the 2017 Super Duty is all new. This is a whole new game, guys. The question is, is it better than the F-150? Or if it's just a beefed up version for a niche segment of the market? The big story, of course, is that it's all aluminum, just like the F-150. The F-150 lost 700 pounds, the Super Duty only lost 350 pounds. But they reinvested that 350 pounds that is missing there, that difference, into other areas in the vehicle. Everything from the high strength steel frame to the new rear axle, the brakes, and all kinds of other things. What does the Super Duty and the F-150 have in common? Well, it's the same box, first and foremost. So, sitting in a new Super Duty, a 2017 Super Duty, really doesn't feel much different from sitting in a 2017 F-150. That's because the box is the same. It's the same cab, you've got the same width. It's actually wider than the old Super Duty by about three inches. Now what's new about the interior, it's a little bit beefier, the buttons are a little bit thicker, and that's kind of a running theme with the Super Duty. It's like the F-150, but beefier. So one of the great things about all the buttons and knobs and stuff in Super Duty is that they're super beefy and the reason they did that is to make them all glove usable so if you're wearing work gloves you'll be able to use all of the different functions and that's great that is so good because I hate capacitive touch buttons this is a pet peeve of mine I hate it when you're forced to use a touch screen or a capacitive touch because if you live in the cold and I guess if you're a worker and you have construction gloves on or something they don't work and it's super frustrating. I also hate super dainty buttons, so buttons that you can just mash and hit four different buttons, that's no good either. I love how Ford has seems to have at least tested this with real people who work with gloves and said, oh, maybe we should make these dials a little bit bigger. Maybe we should make these buttons real big physical buttons so that you can press them and use all of the functionality of, the, of all the technology without having to touch a touch screen and take your glove off. Sometimes old technology works. You don't have to fix it if it's not broken. So another great thing about the interior, everywhere you look, there's storage. Storage is everywhere. There's stuff under the center console, there's stuff in the, in the doors and in the double glove box and up on the dash and in the back. There's plugs everywhere. You can plug in like four different laptops and five different phones and everything. Another thing that makes it feel bigger is the huge panoramic roof. I love this panoramic roof. It's like having a convertible but without getting your hair messed up. It goes from the front all the way back. That might I think that might also be class exclusive. And that including the extra 3 inches you get on either side, it just makes that back feel huge. It's super luxurious. I also love the uh the cup holders that can be either two in a storage space or you can slide it over and then it's four. With the aluminum, you also get the added benefit of you never have to worry about rust on the body panels. The aluminum is thicker, which means that it has more tensile strength than steel. An example of why that's a good thing is that with the thicker aluminum, you slam the door and it's much more solid door slam. It doesn't vibrate as much as a thinner steel sheet of metal would, would vibrate when you shut the door. The F-150 and the Super Duty, for the first time, were designed in conjunction with another. So the chief engineer of the F-Series was also working on the Super Duty at the same time, which meant that they could streamline a lot of those things, which, for example, is why the cab 
or the box or whatever is the same. The doors are perfectly interchangeable. So that means that it's easier to get a door repaired. If your dealership has to order a new aluminum door, it's the exact same process, same part number and everything as ordering an F-150 door. So it's not any more expensive or and it won't take any longer to get a door if it's been dented. Your max torque is going to be with a 6.7 liter power stroke. That's going to be your go-to engine for your typical fleet work truck. I personally liked the V8 a lot. The the 6.2 liter gas V8, that was a great engine. I thought it sounded great, sounded better than, than the diesel, revved up a little bit quicker, things like that. So I would probably go for the 6.2 liter gas V8. They didn't have any of the V10s there, which are also gas, but I'm sure the V10 is also a great engine. It's just gonna be bigger. The frame is 100% different. It's a fully boxed frame, which means that the beams are complete square, almost from front to back. But that means that you're going to have much stronger torsion, much, it can carry a lot more weight and all that kind of stuff. In the middle, the frame is about an inch and a half taller. In fact, you could fit a Ram, so the equivalent Ram truck, you could fit the rail inside of the Ford rail because it's that much smaller. And that means you're gonna get a lot more strength. The new Super Duty also has upgraded suspension, rear leaf springs, front coil springs. They've actually oversprung the rear leaf springs by about one degree. And it's really hard to notice when you're looking at it that it's lifted up just a little bit. But that means that when you put a bunch of weight in the back, the maximum amount that it's gonna sort of crouch or sit down is negative two degrees instead of three degrees or more, which is what you would get on a sort of neutral spring if it was neutral to start out with. Even the ride quality is pretty good for a truck. It does feel like a truck. So I said in my F-150 review that the ride doesn't feel like a truck anymore. It feels like a car quality ride and car quality handling, but in a truck. The Super Duty, it does feel like you're driving a truck. So it's not as refined as the F-150, but it's much closer than the previous Super Duty. Acceleration, not as good as the F-150, but better than the other competitors. It is a bit heavier, so it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be a track monster by any means, but it felt pretty good for a big truck. So those new engines are gonna have over 20,000 pounds towing capacity. That's going to be a lot of weight, so they've upgraded the brakes. You don't want your brakes fading when you're towing a trailer with your brand new boat on the back and you're going downhill, you do not want your brakes to fail. The Chevy brakes were a little bit mushy, the Ram brakes were a little bit mushy, Forge brakes, awesome. The steering rack is hydraulic, so you have a direct link between your input and the drive shaft, but it's also electronically assisted. So in the steering wheel, there is a powerful electric motor that will assist in your turning. It's a quicker rack at slower speeds, and then at higher speeds, it'll be it'll slow it down. That adaptive steering really makes a big difference for your handling. Going through that slalom course, you really want that adaptive steering. I don't know how many of you guys are gonna be doing slalom, but in rear world in rear in real world situations uh, steering is going to be tricky in man tight maneuvering areas so say you're on a construction site and you've got to maneuver through the construction site to try to get to the back of the site or if you're in a hotel parking lot like I am right now and you're trying to maneuver into a spot that adaptive steering is gonna be super helpful, I guarantee it. So you've probably seen a lot of commercials these days about aluminum beds, getting holes in them and whatever from the Chevy commercials. And the fact is that as far as I've heard and I've asked around, there have never been any complaints about that happening from customers. So to me, that seems like a Chevy ad agency inventing a problem that doesn't actually exist. And with the Super Duty, it's gonna be even less of a problem because it's 14% thicker gauge of aluminum than the, uh, than the F-150. And they've upgaged everything. I don't remember the exact numbers, but 
the minimum is 14% upgaged and everything in the bed is upgaged. So the F-150 was the first time ever that a truck has gotten a top safety pick. So even though the Super Duty hasn't been tested, the fact that it's the same, the same box but with even more beefed up undercarriage means that I'm sure it'll be at least it'll be a top safety pick again. Another cool technology feature that they have is the 8-inch productivity screen right in front of you. Now this is something that you've probably seen on Audis and things like that. And I really like it. I think it looks great. You've got all these menus, you can get all kinds of different info, everything from your from the tire pressure of your trailer wheels. You can have six you can have a six wheel trailer and know the tire pressure of each one right on that of each tire right on that screen. You can even have your oil temperature, you can have your coolant temperature right on that cool productivity screen. So in addition to that awesome screen, you have another screen in the center of the dashboard and that screen is where you have your SYNC 3 system, which, thank God, SYNC 3 is going to be standard on all 2017 vehicles, I believe. And I'm super excited about that because the old My Ford Touch system is, let's be honest, it's, it's shit. It's not that good. Um, so I'm super excited. SYNC 3, it's not the best system out there. It's not the, the best new thing. It's not perfect, but at least it's functional, it works, it has its capacitive touch so you can zoom in and zoom out like normal modern touch screens. It feels like something that actually works. I haven't had a chance to use this, the SYNC 3 system for an extended period of time, but I'm going to be getting a 2017 Ford vehicle soon and I'll be able to tell you guys how it is once that happens. So keep an eye out for that video. Make sure you subscribe. But back to the Super Duty. So with those screens, you get all these cameras, which I was super excited to see. You get, I think, 10 different cameras. And what that means is that you can have the top-down parking feature, which I think is super cool. You've seen it on a lot of different vehicles, even some Ford vehicles, and it, I think it started with either Mercedes or, or BMW was the first to have that sort of top-down bird's eye view, so you can see actually where you are relative to everything around you because of these wide-angle camera lenses that are then sort of with software made into this image of what's around you. It's, it's super cool technology. And the benefit of the Super Duty is that it's actually much higher definition than any other system I've seen. Granted, I haven't been in a new BMW and seen how they do it, or a new Audi or Mercedes, but of all the systems that I've seen, which is sort of standard, regular, middle class vehicles, this is the highest quality one that I've seen. And I've been told that it's also the best in low light conditions. So keep an eye out for that. I think this top down view is super awesome, especially because these Super Duties are so big. These are huge vehicles. You also get front view, which is great because it's kind of hard to see over the hood. The hood is pretty long and you're pretty high up. So you, it's hard to see what's going on down there in front of you. So having the front view camera 180 degree front view camera is going to be great, especially when you're trying to pull up to a stop sign and you can't, you have limited visibility around the corner. All those cameras are going to be a huge help. 2017 Super Duty should be there, should be at your local Ford dealership sometime in November. And the great thing is that there aren't any delays, there haven't been any production problems so far. So it should be that every vehicle is available all of the trim levels, all of the options, everything should be available right away at your Ford dealership in November. They've done 12 million miles worth of testing on this car or this truck, and that's more than any other vehicle in history. So that means that this truck is gonna be super durable, super rugged, super reliable, super duty. The question is, 
do you want to get Super Duty over an F-150? Is the Super Duty a better truck? From my first impressions right now, for 99% of people out there, the F-150 is the better truck. It's lighter, it's more nimble on its feet, it has amazing towing abilities, it's great capacity in the back, you've got all the options, super luxurious with the higher trim levels, the Lariat, the King Ranch, which is my favorite, Platinum Limited, super luxurious, tons of power options, you've got the 3.5 EcoBoost, which is a beast, I love that engine, you've of course got the 5.0 uh, Mustang engine in there too, great engine, can't go wrong with a V8. I would say, if it was me, I would get the F-150. I think it's the better car for most people. That being said, there are people where the F-150 isn't going to cut it. You need that extra power, extra torque, extra towing capacity, extra hauling capacity, or you're a fleet and you need to upfit it with a bunch of stuff in the back. Dump truck, work truck, tow truck, all that stuff. And for that, you have to go with the Ford. If you can afford it, you have to go with the Ford. It is simply the better truck. If you want to get the best, if you can afford the best, get the best, and the best is the Super Duty. That's all I got for you guys now. Post any questions that you guys have. I've got a ton of info in this booklet and notes that I took at this event. Unfortunately, I, if I included it all in a video, this video would be way too long and nobody would watch it. So post your questions down there in the comments and I'll read through them all. I'll try to answer them by text and if there's enough good questions, I'll make another part two video about the Super Duty. It was a blast driving it. I hope you guys enjoyed learning more about it. And uh, make sure you subscribe. We've got tons more content coming out. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. The first thing you need to know about this truck is that most people are completely wrong about everything they think they know about Ford's decision to go aluminum.